The Rolex Explorer, the Omega Aquaterra, and this new Black Bay 39. These are all considered gotta watches. Go anywhere, do anything. And we're supposed to love these things, right? At least if you listen to the reviewers. So does this Black Bay 39 make the cut into my permanent collection? Well, you have to watch till the end to find out, but I'm gonna spend the first half of this video telling you why this Tudor is almost perfect as an everyday watch. But I'll spend the second half explaining why you might not be the type of collector who wants a gotta watch at all. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. So I just got back from Wind Up Watch Fair in San Francisco and man, it was so nice to meet many of you in person. If you see me around, please don't hesitate to tap me on the shoulder, say hi. In the meantime, find me on the new Watch Crunch app, available on both Android and iOS. 31, 36, 39, 54, 58. Did I miss one? The Black Bay line is running out of numbers. The BB54 this year stole the spotlight at Watches and Wonders, but if you already have a Black Bay 58, I think there's little reason to downsize. Now, one watch that flew under the radar and really pleasantly surprised me in person was the new update of Black Bay 39. The bezel-less Black Bays just don't get the love that they deserve, but they do have their cult following, and for good reason. Because when you remove the diving contraption and leave the dial dateless, what you get is a more simple, more essential watch, something casual wearing, something akin to the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, but of course, much cheaper and attainable. A number of small but important improvements were made this year to make this watch near perfect as a daily driver. The first thing you'll notice for keen-eyed viewers is the new chunky Jubilee bracelet with polished centers. But how does that work? A very dressy bracelet on a tooly watch. But it just does. And I think it's because when you take away the diving bezel and replace it with all of this high polish, the eye needs something to anchor to. An Oyster was always just a bit bland for this watch, in my opinion. But with the Jubilee, now the fun doesn't stop with just the dial. The bracelet has this mild taper that ends in a hefty fold-over clasp with ceramic bearings for positive engagement. And new for this year is the T-Fit system for quick on-the-go adjustments. This pretty watch finally gets the stellar bracelet that it deserves. As far as dial colors are concerned, there's champagne, blue, and then this sometimes brown, sometimes anthracite, really mysterious color option. They all burst with life with radial brushing that dances in the sunlight, but I love this particular colorway because on top of that deep brown dial are gilt accents found on the hands and the markers. There's also a gilt minute track at the periphery, and this all gives this watch a bit of a vintage vibe. But if you look closer, the dial has that very modern, high definition appearance to communicate superb levels of finishing. The marker surrounds are thin and perfect lines. The printing of the words on the dial is small and crisp. And speaking of the hands, Tudor has decided this year to revoke the snowflake shape from the second hand. Now, I was undecided on this move. Initially, I thought this would make the watch look a little bit more generic, as the square theme is sort of what defines Tudor's design language. But in person, it's subtle and somehow makes this watch look more refined. I think the little lollipop with the long skinny tip just seems to make this watch feel more comfortable in its britches, less about shouting its heritage in your face. Now, whether that big snowflake hour hand is your cup of tea, that's beyond my say. Inside the BB39 comes another welcome update with the in-house MT5602 movement. These well-proven Kinesi movements are your perfect daily companion with a smooth 4 hertz beat rate while still delivering 70 hours of power. It's cost certified, so you won't be missing any of your appointments, and it's got a silicon hairspring so you're set even if that appointment is with an MRI machine. The case is well finished with mostly polished sides and distinct beveling running down the corners of the lugs. A subtle thing that Tudor did this year was to make the previously slabby mid case thinner and they seem to have transferred some of that height into a deeper dish case back to the point that the side profile almost resembles the Rolex Oyster. That's not a bad thing. Just don't tell the Black Bay Pro. The proportions of this watch is near perfect for me. 39 by 12 on a sports watch are numbers that I dream about. The lug to lug is 47, which is a little bit longer, but still manageable given their shape. 
and the heft of this bracelet helps to balance the watch head such that it feels really easy wearing all day. And because of the sloping bezel, it won't catch on any shirt sleeves. With a screw down crown and 100 meters water resistance, this really is a watch for all occasions. But we need to stop and ask, do we want a watch for all occasions? Okay, before we get too metaphysical, guys, do me a favor, drop a like for this video and subscribe for more deep dives on new releases like this one. I've owned, sold, been offered, turned down many great everyday watches, Explorers, Aquaterras, even my Zen 556, I've noticed I'm wearing less and less. And I get the sinking feeling that after this review, I'll probably be moving on from this tutor as well. Which is sad because this is a beautiful watch. I mean, I put it on this morning and I was drooling for a hot minute, but I just know that I won't be wearing this very much in a month or two. So it got me thinking, if all the experts are telling us Gata watches are perfect, why can't I keep a Gata watch in my collection? I should want to wear these watches every day, right? I mean, look at that loom. You can use this as a flashlight, but maybe I don't want a perfect watch, just like I don't want ChatGPT to design me a watch. Frankly, all of this mention of suits versus t-shirts and jeans is just starting to sound a little bit cliche. So. I think I figured it out. You know that guy that tries to please everybody? Yeah, nobody likes that guy. It's like the idiom, if you try to please all, you please none. And that is to say a watch made for all occasions is actually tailor-made for none. It's the same reason why I don't like most Maseratis. Not that I can afford one, but bear with me for a second. It's like, are you a purebred Italian supercar made for the track or are you a plush leather lounge on wheels? When you try to be both, it turns out you can't really be either. So a Gata watch is inherently a compromise. It almost has to be a bit generic by design so that it can be inoffensive and fit in everywhere. Now, I applaud the BB39 for its Jubilee bracelet. It's finally trying to break the mold a little bit. But for me, it might be too little too late. See, I'm too far down the watch hoarding rabbit hole for a multi-purpose watch like this. I have a Grand Seiko for formals. I have an IWC for casuals. I've got a G-Shock for mud wrestling and a Speedy for Tuesdays. So to me, those are watches with more interesting stories and more intentional purposes. Watches that would look wrong in certain occasions, but oh so right when the moment arises. And sometimes it's fun to wear a Cartier to the gym. It's a bit of a middle finger to convention and you can't make statements like that with Gata watches. So who is the very lovely Black Bay 39 for? Well, I think if you have a smaller collection or you just want one watch that you can grab in the morning without standing naked in front of your watch box, scratching your head, I totally don't do that. Uh, then this is your ticket. Or say it's your first luxury watch and you're not sure if this sport is right for you, then by all means, get a watch like the Black Bay 39 to test the waters. So you really need to ask yourself before buying a Gata watch. Are you looking for generalists or are you looking for specialists? But what do you guys think? Do Gata watches have a place in bigger collections? Come discuss with me on Watch Crunch. Either download the app or click that link in the pinned comments below. Stay crunchy. I'll see you in the next one.